tell us a little bit about how you became the keynote speaker at today's event here. Well, Mac gave me a call out of the blue, really. They've had a, a great series of speakers that have come in before me. My roommate in Munich, Frank Shorter, came two years ago. The year before that was Bill Rogers. Shanane Flanagan came last year. So they're really trying to bring some top-notch present and former athletes in to kind of help motivate, I think, some of the young runners in the audience. Well, I, I call it the winning attitude. I like to, to focus in on the amount of hard work. I, I'm preaching to the choir with a lot of these people, but hard work and, and commitment and focus and uh, self-confidence and a competitive spirit, kind of kind of some of the attributes that I think uh, are needed in order to achieve your success, in, whether you're an athlete or, or just in life in general. Uh, first of all, I want to ask, you know, what do you remember, kind of what are your memories of uh, winning the gold medal? Well, I have obviously a lot of fond memories. Uh, of, of, of the medal and, and you know it's interesting though I over the years I start seeing the race more from the camera's eye than my own so I'm starting to forget a little bit of what I felt in the Olympics but that that overall feeling of accomplishment never never leaves you and it's just a tremendous sense of pride in your country uh, especially when you see the uh, national or the flag being raised up to the highest height and then also just a sense of accomplishment of a goal that that you set that you were able to achieve. Oh, that's fine. Well, I think it's it's the it's a culmination of a lot of hard work and, and practice and and uh, uh, you know you, you have that sense of pride in your in your country uh, that you're able to accomplish something for your country and also f for yourself and and uh, it's just a it's a great it's a great feeling and you really really wish that everybody could have that feeling once in their life you know it's one of those once in a lifetime opportunities what does it mean to you kind of be able to share this sort of thing you know get up there and speak to you know one of the next Olympic champions could be in this room right now very much so well you know it's it's a great diversion for me to a certain extent because my career has always been in college admissions and financial aid so it's nice to break out of my day-to-day uh, vocation and be able to reminisce really about a wonderful experience in my life. You know, people ask me that you get tired. It's been 40 years. You get tired of talking about the Olympics, and and I always say, you know, why would you ever get tired of talking about such a wonderful experience in your life? It really is is a, a life changing something that just sticks with you your whole your whole life. Yeah. Sure. And one of the last things I want to ask you about uh, probably one of the uh, not as fun memories from that time. What do you remember about? Well, uh, we were fairly close. Uh, Frank Shorter, who won the marathon, was my roommate. We were only about 100 yards away from uh, where the terrorists uh, uh, took the Israeli athletes uh, captive. And, uh, you know, it was just a tragic event. The Olympics is just a big stage. It's always going to be a target for some group to try to make a, a statement, uh, as tragic as it was. I was actually uh, uh, glad that the Olympics uh, continued on because, uh, you know, you get a horrific incident like that, you'd have a tendency just to stop the Olympics. And I'm afraid that if you stop them once, it'd be so easy to stop them again. And the real beauty of the Olympics is the, the community of, of, of athletes and that we're all together competing with one another. And that's too wonderful of an experience to have it stop for, for, for a particular instance.